Coming up on The Potter's Touch. I'm trying to break you out of your Sunday school God into an understanding of who he is in your life right now because you're not a child anymore and you're not fighting a childish devil. You're fighting a grown up mature devil that's coming against you in supernatural ways. And you cannot fight a supernatural enemy if you are limited to natural power. You've got to walk in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. This is the Potter's Touch. Hello, this is Sarah Jakes and you are tuned in to the Potter's Touch. I am so excited to present this message, one of my personal favorites. Sometimes we can become so overwhelmed with all of the things going on in our life that it's difficult to still hear the voice of God. Don't worry though, Bishop has a message just for you. This one called In Harmony with God. Check it out. For a few moments, I wanna to talk to you about being in harmony with God. About being in harmony with God. You, you, you can't be in harmony with other people until you learn how to be in harmony with God. God, God brings you in harmony with him, with other people, and here's the good part, with yourself. Because there's nothing like being in disagreement with yourself. Disagreement stops you from progress. When you are at odds with yourself, should I go right, should I go left? The only reason I can walk over here is because my feet are in agreement. If my right foot wants to go back this way and my left foot wants to go up here, I'm gonna have some problems. I'm gonna be split. And some of you are split right now. You're not the force that you need to be because you're not in agreement between your actions, your attitude, your internal heart is saying one thing, your actions are saying another thing, your attitude is saying something else, and you are stopped and split. We're gonna bring you into alignment today. You ready for this? Let me put the text in context. We're reading out of the book of Acts. It is the companion to the Gospel of St. Luke. Uh, many theologians believe that originally they were one book. So when you read the 24th chapter of the, book of the Gospel of St. Luke, you will find that the continuation of thought continues in the book of Acts. It is not inappropriate to understand that the book of Acts picks up and begins to discuss Christ in us while Luke focuses on Christ with us. The dwell amongst us God now dwells in us. The dwell amongst us God now dwells in us. He dwelt amongst his people, turning water into wine, healing the sick, raising the dead, dwelling amongst us. He said, I have been with you, but I shall be in you. I don't just want to dwell among you. I want to dwell in you. So why, whereas Luke is focused on teaching us about the dwell amongst us God, in the book of Acts, he now focuses on the transition from the God who dwells amongst you to the God who dwells in you. I just want to put it in perspective. Luke finishes up at the cross and shows us Christ resurrected from the dead. From the cross, buried in the tomb, raised up on the third day. He, he shows up on the third day and shows himself to his disciples. Before he is crucified, he shows himself to the world. Everybody sees him. There is no secret. Anybody can experience it. 5,000 people get to see him work his miracles. The, the, the bridal party at the wedding get to see him work his miracles. His miracles happen on the side of the road without discrimination. He exposed himself to everybody up to the cross. But once he rose up from the dead, he only exposed himself to those that were his. He said, I'm through exposing myself to the world. The world has rejected me. I will expose myself to those who believe. Oh, I'm preaching already. Yeah. There, there, there comes a point where you have to stop trying to convince people 
who refuse to be convinced. And you begin to focus on that elect group of people who have synergy with your vision. That, that, that's, that's the truth you can take and post on a lot of different places in your life. Some of you have spent a long time trying to convince people who will not be convinced. You, you're, you're expending your energy in the wrong effort. Christ expended his energy giving the world an opportunity, Israel in particular, to experience his glory, but not Israel exclusively. He showed up to, at the woman at the well. He, he exposed himself to Gentiles. He exposed himself to a lot of people. When he rose from the dead, he only appears in private settings amongst believers. In the upper room, he shows himself. To the disciples on the road to Emmaus, he shows himself. He shows himself to people who believe in him. Let me show you why. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he shall show them his covenant. That means that when you are a believer and you fear, fear means reverence, respect God. God shows you things that other people don't. See. Now, the Bible says, the former treaties have I made, this is Acts 1, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, with all that Jesus began to do and to teach, that he showed himself alive for 40 days with many infallible proofs. So he rose from the dead and showed himself alive for 40 days with many infallible proofs. Infallible proofs means you can't argue with it. He appears in the room. They said he's a ghost. He picks up some fish and he eats him some catfish with hot sauce on it. Says, see? A little bit of improvisation, but you see the point. I just put it in a cultural connotation for relevancy's sake in the setting in which I am extrapolating this ideology. But <laughs> he, he eats fish to say, I am something you have never seen before. I am spirit enough to appear. I am physical enough to eat. Don't call me what you've seen before. I'm not a ghost, I'm not an apparition, I'm not a, I'm not a ghost, and I, I'm, I'm not a man. I am the resurrected Lord, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. I am that I am. I can do whatever I want to do, however I want to do it, whenever I get ready to do it. You can't make me fit in the box of your past experience. I'm God and beside me there is no other. You have never seen anything like me. I can do stuff that's outside of your point of reference. I can boggle your mind with my ability to be spirit when I need to be spirit and yet be able to relate to you. Oh, God. I'm, I'm human enough to eat fish with you. I'm God enough to appear in your circumstance. Oh, you don't have to open the door for me. When I get ready to come in, I just come in. He appears to the disciples on the road to Emmaus. They look up and a stranger just shows up and starts walking beside them, saying, what's up? They said, let me tell you, man, what's going on. There's this guy named Jesus. They crucified him the other day, buried him in the tomb. There's a rumor going all over the city. Somebody roll a stone away, and he's risen from the dead. Jesus said, oh, yeah. Isn't it something when we try to inform a God who is omniscient? We try to explain things to God who already knows what you're trying to explain. The futility of venting your frustration in prayer is mammoth because you are frustrated and trying to tell God about something. Do you really think God will sleep while that was happening? Don't you understand that God knows what's going on? Oh, he knows. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Touch your neighbor and say, he knows, he knows, he knows. He already knows. He already knows. The knowing God now shows up. The God 
who has intellectual knowledge of what's going on now appears in the situation and say, I'm resurrected. What does your resurrection have to do with my situation? He said, if I overcame death and the grave, I did it as a model for you to understand that you can overcome what you are confronting right now in your situation. I want you to know me not only in the fellowship of my suffering, the cross, but in the power of my resurrection. You can't be a resurrected believer until you rise up out of stuff that people have buried you in and roll a stone in front of you. And just like your daddy got up on the third day, you are due for a resurrection. 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 Oh my, this is gonna be good this morning. I feel it. I feel like the rabbi, the teacher, the master is in this room teaching us how to walk in resurrected power. He shows up and starts showing you all the things he can do in resurrected power. Interesting scripture for you to look at. As he is, so are we in this world. Not as he was. As he is, so are we in this world. Not as he used to be. As he is resurrected, so are we in this world. That's why we bury you by baptism into his death, Romans 6, that we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. God wants you to walk in resurrected power, walking above your circumstances and situations. He did not promise you a world that wouldn't nail you to a cross or people that wouldn't throw you to a grave or an enemy that would not relegate a stone over top of your experience. But he did promise you that in spite of all of these adversities, three days, you'll come out of it. Tell somebody, say, I'll come out of it. I've been through some stuff, but I'll come out of it. I had some dark places, but I'll come out of it. My money's been funny, but I'll come out of it. I haven't been feeling so good in my body, but I'll come out of it. My family's kind of shaky right now, but don't worry about me, I'll come out of it. They rolled a stone in front of me and said I wouldn't get up, but don't worry about me, I'll come out of it. I, as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, not as he used to be. I'm trying to break through your historical understanding of who Christ is. I'm trying to break through your religious connotations of faith brought about by the God of your childhood. I'm trying to break you out of your Sunday school God into an understanding of who he is in your life right now because you're not a child anymore and you're not fighting a childish devil. You're fighting a grown-up, mature devil that's coming against you in supernatural ways and you cannot fight a supernatural enemy if you are limited to natural power. You've got to walk in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Still to come on The Potter's Touch. We're trying to get to the destination, but the real message is in the journey. You understand what I'm saying? There's some things you want to see God do in your life. That's your destination. But it is the things you learn along the way that is the most beneficial to you. If, 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 if I give you the destination without the process, you won't be able to hold on to it. If, if I give you what you shall be without you going through what you're going through, you won't have the fortitude to be able to hold on to what I'm going to release in your life. It's an amazing experience. It's an opportunity to um, learn, and you know, from Bishop Jakes, to learn from what he's experienced, um, to understand what leadership is, to understand what it is to be a pastor. God has a place for you to go and to preach and to touch, and until you finish your purpose, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. This year, we decided to bring uh, most of our leaders so they can hear the life-changing message. It's critical, it's essential. I recommend it to anybody. I've seen others talk about it, but I have experienced it and witnessed it. It's like none other. Save your money, do whatever you gotta do to get here 
because your ministry, your life will never be the same. A thousand may fall at thy right side. 10,000 may fall at thy left side, but it shall not come nigh thee. No weapon formed against you shall be able Somebody say, I'm still here. I had some close calls, but I'm still here. I had some dark days, but I'm still here. I've had some enemy arsonists, but I'm still here. I've been shot at, but I'm still here. I've been lied on, but I'm still here. I've even been wounded, but I'm still here. My God. That's why you got to praise him. You can't worry about what people say about you and think about you. You are a miracle. It's not just that you have a testimony, you are a testimony. Anybody been through what you've been through and you still alive to tell? You better give him some praise. It would be fraudulent for you to suggest by your behavior that you made it through all of that by yourself. I'm gonna teach real good in a minute. Just wait a minute, it's gonna, it's gonna get good. He showed himself alive for 40 days, 40 days with many infallible proofs. Penta means 50. Okay, so we explained 40 days. 40 days, he's showing up with many infallible proofs. On the 40th day, he whistles for cloud limousine service. <laughs> Steps in the heaven's limo and starts elevating right in the presence of his disciples separating himself from men who were so afraid of him leaving that they were fighting for him to stay. Now they have the faith to release him. Sometimes you fight to hold on to things that if you start operating in faith, one of the real signs of faith is your ability I mean, the last time they tried to take Jesus, Peter was cutting people's ears off and stuff. Thomas said, I, well, I guess I'll go die with him. You know, they were just, just fatalist. You cannot go away. Jesus said, if I go not away, the comforter cannot come. <laughs> if I remain with you, I can't be in you. As a believer, is your faith with you or in you? Does Christ hang around you or does he live inside of you? He wants to go from being around you to being in you. So as he is going up in the cloud, the Bible says he is blessing them as he is departing. And they are like blown away. Because as he's going up, he's just blessing them, blessing them, blessing them, just blessing them, blessing them. And they're, they're, they're standing there gazing up at him. And he sends some angels down to say, stop gazing. Stop looking up at where I have been. Stop looking at where you last saw me as if I'm not going to do anything new beyond what you saw last. Religion always gazes at where it last saw God. But relationship moves beyond history to destiny. You see what I'm saying? Now, 
we, we, we caught 40 days. We can't have Pentecost because Pentecost has got to be 10 days away. They leave Bethany because the angel said, get out of here and go do something with your faith. Live out your faith. Don't just stand there gazing. Some people come on Sunday morning, they just come and gaze. I can, I can feel them when I got a room full of gazers. They're just gazing at you. We're going to go over there and hear Brother Jakes. And they get them a nice, comfortable seat and they gaze. He says, stop gazing. Stop gazing at where you last saw me. Stop, stop gazing at where you last saw me. Even if you last saw me in your last relationship. Stop gazing at where I used to be. Stop gazing at your old job. Stop gazing at your old church. Stop gazing. Gazing people never get anything done. They just stare. So he sends angels who are ministering spirits, incidentally, whenever God wants to send a message, he does it through the mailmen of angels because angels are God's mailmen. And he said, go down there and tell them to stop looking at where they last saw me. I didn't go through all of this for them to stand there at Bethany and just keep looking up. Have you gone through a period in your life that you're just gazing like a deer in headlights? Or are you living your life with power, gusto, excitement, and through the other? You need something to fight. You need something to do. You need something that needs God's help for you to get it done. You, you, he is a God of big ideas. You need something bigger than you. He, he, he told them, go into all the world and preach the gospel. But the only problem was none of them were preachers. Not one of the 12 was a rabbi. Not one of them. He, he told 12 guys to do something they had never done. Most of them had no training in the area. He said, I'm going to challenge you to do something that's going to make you need me to get it done. You'll never be able to do it without me. You'll never be a mother without me. You'll never be a great dad without me. You'll never hold that house together without me. You'll never do that work without me. I put you in a corner. I knew you were limited when I called you. I wanted you to be limited so you would lean on me. <laughs> Glory to God. I know you can't handle it. I know it's too much for you. I know you haven't had any training. I know you haven't had any speaking classes. I know you speak with the list. I know you got stammering licks, Moses. I know you stutter. I knew you stuttered when I called you. I still am going to anoint you to go down there and tell Pharaoh, my God said, let my people go. Even if you have to say, let, 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 let my people go. When you say it, I'm going to do magic through you. I'm going to do miracles through you. It could be possible that my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Th that if you were more competent, you wouldn't be as Christ-centered. If you were more sure of yourself, you wouldn't be so sure of me. He says, I want you to stop gazing and go. For this is day 40, now they're going. And they're, they're going and they're excited and they're fired up. And generally, when we start talking about the 50th day, when the day of Pentecost, and when the day of Pentecost, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, we're so busy trying to get from 40 to 50 that we forget about 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. We're, we're trying to get to the destination, but the real message is in the journey. Understand what I'm saying? There's some things you want to see God do in your life. That's your destination. But it is the things you learn along the way that is the most beneficial to you. If, 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 if I give you the destination without the process, you won't be able to hold on to it. 
if, if I give you what you shall be without you going through what you're going through, you won't have the fortitude to be able to hold on to what I'm going to release in your life. That's why I didn't give you full-grown kids. So you'd have time to figure them jokers out. While they're trying to figure out how to ride bicycles and stuff, you're trying to figure out how to survive this. And by the time they get crazy, you've got some roots. And then when they come out of it, you, you are happy because you went through when they was crazy. So you now appreciate when they come out. And all of that enhances the relationship. It's the stuff you go through along the way that, make, that validates love. You don't want romance without reservation. What makes romance romantic is the frustration that proceeds it. So you can't jump from 40 to 50 because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delighted in his way. That's why God doesn't use elevators or escalators. It's the process that trains you. It is my prayer that listening to this message has helped you recognize that we need to be in tune with the best parts of us. Don't focus so much on your insecurities and things in your life that you feel aren't going well, but rather take a moment to really be in harmony with all of the God things in your life. I have enjoyed being with you today. As always, we have to thank our incredible partners. If it wasn't for you, we would not be able to offer this programming to millions of people around the world. Thank you so much for being with us. We look forward to seeing you next time right here on The Potter's Touch. Now every sermon is about the benefits, but the only problem is nobody's doing the job. How are you eligible for the benefits when you don't do the job? The only reason you're afraid is because you are filled up with yourself, but when you get filled up with him, you will not be afraid. With your gift of any size, you'll receive Bishop's message out of service on CD from the Full Tank series. And with your gift of $70 or more, you'll receive the entire three-part series Full Tank on DVD. Does Christ hang around you or does he live inside of you? He wants to go from being around you to being in you. However, with your gift of $160 or more, you'll receive Full Tank on DVD and our Christmas gift collection, which includes the Message of Christmas booklet, a box set of inspirational cards, and joy, hope, and peace candle holders. Rev up your engine and go the distance on a Full Tank today. Next time on The Potter's Touch. Grace is in the gap. Grace giving me time to get it together. Grace giving me time to settle old grievances. Grace giving me time to pick out where do I go from here. Grace delivers me from gazing upward when I ought to be walking outward. Grace giving me time to get my head on straight, get my focus back, get myself together. Lord, I thank you for grace. I thank you for the gap. I thank, oh, I thank you for the difference between my effort and your ability. I thank you that you taught me to stretch, and even when I stretch, I'm limited, but you make up the difference between my limited and your maximum. Thank you for the gap in my life. This is the Potter's touch.